Here we go with my latest attempt at reflow soldering with an electric hot plate. So what have we got here? Uh, first we've just got a El Cheapo electric hot plate here, like the same type you'd use for cooking pasta at home. Uh, I've got a thin aluminum plate here. It's a 1 16th inch aluminum plate. Um, that's not really required, but it makes it easier to get the boards off of the hot plate when they're done cooking. Uh, I've got my syringe of solder paste. Um, this time I'm using a Chip Quick. It's an SMD 291AX. And um, somewhere on here you can see the uh, manufacturing date is um, it was made in October of 2016, which means it's about uh, five months old now. I have not kept it refrigerated, uh, but I just received it yesterday uh, from DigiKey, and they shipped it in a cold pack, so I'm going to assume it was refrigerated in their warehouse and is still fresh. Um, the ChipQuick syringe came with two different tips, um, one plastic, one metal. They, I can get the camera on that. They look to be uh, about the same diameter. Um, not sure which one will be appropriate to use, but maybe I'll try them both. Uh, if both of those end up being too wide of a diameter, I also have another smaller syringe uh, with a narrow gauge needle that I can dispense into and then use that to dispense onto the board. So here's the board we're going to be reflowing. Um, it's pretty simple. It's just got uh, two capacitors that are 0805 packages, and then it has two IC footprints that have um, a 0 0.5 millimeter pin spacing between them. So these are kind of a pain to solder. Uh, and in my past attempts at reflow soldering, I've ended up with a tremendous number of solder bridges between the pins on these two chips. So I'll be interested to see if it works any better with this chip quick solder paste. Um, over here I've also got an um, infrared thermometer. So I'll just point this at the board while it's cooking to keep an eye on the temperature. Uh, I've got a pair of gloves to help take the aluminum plate off the burner when I'm done without burning my hands. And then um, we've got the components themselves. So these are the two chips that I'm going to be placing on the board. And here's my reel of capacitors. Uh, and I think that's it. So let's give it a shot. Okay, I've got the metal tip on the solder paste syringe here. Um, and because I'm cheap and lazy, I do not have a stencil for this PCB. So I'm just going to dispense the solder paste directly onto the pads. And on these really closely spaced 0.5 millimeter pads, I'm just going to run a line of solder paste all the way down uh, across all the pads and then hope that it all works out okay when the solder melts. Alright, so I'll do a little dab onto each of the capacitor pads first. This stuff doesn't really want to seem to stick to the board. There we go. Alright. Alright, well, I just made a mess, so there's a just a blob of solder I need to get off of the needle. I'll clean that up later. Okay, I think I've done the capacitor pads not very neatly and probably with too much solder, but I'll just hope for the best. Okay, so now let's do the IC pads in one long line of solder paste. All right, this is working a little better than before. All right, there's four lines of solder paste. Now, one thing I've seen different opinions on is, um, should I just leave the solder paste in a bead on the when I went down the IC pads, or should I use a, a pick or a Q-tip or something to kind of spread it around um, so that it covers all of the pads more evenly. Uh, I'm just going to leave it as a bead. Okay, I think it's ready to cook. 
So let's see. All right, here we go. So turn the hot plate on full. And I've got a temperature in the center of the board of about 19 degrees Celsius. Still, still 19, now it's 20. I'm going to let it run up to about 100. Um, there's an interesting, there's kind of a thermal lag between the, the uh, heating element and the hot plate and the surface of the burner and the temperature of this aluminum sheet and the temperature of the PCB. So even after I turn off the hot plate, uh, this temperature is going to continue to rise up for a while. Okay, we're at 30 degrees Celsius, 34. Um, so I need to actually shut off, I need to turn off the burner before I reach my desired temperature. Okay, 40 degrees, 45, 41, 46, 48. The temperature jumps around a little bit depending on exactly what part of the board I aim at. Let me get a little closer. 70, 60, 75, 78, 80. 83, 90, 86, 90, 93, 100, 97, 95, 106. Okay, good enough. I'm going to turn it off. Okay, so the hot plate is now turned off, but the temperature should continue to go up. 114, 116, 118, 115. Now I should be counting about a minute or so here. Something is smoking a little bit and I'm not sure what that is. It might be some kind of oil or coating that was on my aluminum sheet. Uh, 129, 134, 126, 141, 148, 142. So the solder hasn't melted, but its its appearance has changed. It now looks kind of a very dull gray. Um, almost kind of a, a chalky appearance. Temperature is 140, 149, 152. 151, 148. This is pretty good. I was actually hoping to have it stabilize around 150 or so. And this is just to, you don't want to heat up the board so fast to the actual soldering melting point, otherwise it can, um, that can cause problems. 157. All right. So this, we've probably been waiting long enough, so I'm going to turn the burner back on again and actually melt this solder. Um, so actually I'll just put down the soldering gun because I'm just going to use my eyes to tell when the solder has melted and then I'll be ready with the gloves. Okay, one, two, three, burner on. Put the gloves on my hands to get ready. Okay, I'm watching the solder. Nothing's happening yet. Still, still gray. It's still that dull gray color. Oh, okay. I'm starting to get solder melting on the right hand side of one of the chips and I can see I just have a whole wall of bridges. Um, Virtually every pin is bridged together. Uh, so I probably just use way too much solder paste. Um, okay, now I've got one, okay, I've got three of the four rows of 
pins on the ICs are soldered or melted. Uh, the fourth one still isn't, so there must be that part of the plate must be not quite as warm. So I'm going to sort of shift this thing around. Okay, that fourth row is starting to melt. Okay, the fourth row looks pretty melted. Um, I'm going to, I don't know, count to five or something and make sure everything's really melted here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, and let's lift this thing off and call it good. Boom. All right, and then I'll turn the hot plate off. And voila. Okay, well, we've got good news and bad news here. Um, the bad news is, as you can see, these pins on these ICs, there's just ridiculous amounts of solder bridges everywhere. Um, yeah, like virtually every pin is bridged. Um, the good news is that um, the the wetting action of the solder uh, seems to be well, actually, I was going to say it seemed to be better than with the um, the previous solder paste I, I used that turned out to have been expired. Um, but as I look at this again, I think I need to get out a, a higher powered magnifier. But I'm not convinced that it is. I think I see, I'm sure I see whole areas of pads that are still uh, kind of that gold plated color. Um, that's the color of uh, what the bare pad looked like with no solder on it. It's kind of hard to see in this, in the video. Maybe if I get a better angle or something. Um, huh. Well, that's disappointing too. All right, well, back to the drawing board. I'm gonna try again with a second board, uh, and this time, see if we can get that in focus. Um, I smeared the solder paste onto the IC pads uh, with a cotton swab um, so that um, it hopefully would be it would a little bit more similar to um, what you'd be likely to get from a solder stencil. Uh, and I just I tried to apply less solder paste overall as well compared to what I did previously. So we'll see if this works any better. Well, that one came out better. It's still not great. Um, there are far fewer solder bridges. Um, and it looks like the pads got coated with solder pretty well. Um, still kind of uneven and there's at least a couple of three four solder bridges on every side of every chip um, so yeah I think to do this properly it may just maybe I need a, a stencil or maybe I need a real reflow process.